I wanted to post this video. Uh, it's just a few days after I took my NCLEX and I wanted to post an updated video of what worked for me and my my personal tips for success. Didn't think I was gonna pass, but I did. I found out just a few days ago, so sorry for this quick informal video. I promise I'll make a better one, a more detailed one later on, but I just wanted to get this out ASAP, so let's do it. What's up you guys, it's Bronte again. I wanted to take a moment to update about my NCLEX studying and taking the NCLEX itself. I passed, I just found out the other day. I took my exam on Friday and after 48 hours, you can opt through Pearson to pay $7.95 to see your unofficial results. And I paid it because I can't wait. And it said it passed. I actually, it actually shut off at 75 questions and I was very, very shocked. I thought I failed, but uh, yeah, I was really, really happy to see that I passed, but I wanted to take the time to take what I saw on the NCLEX and kind of compare it to what I did with studying. Now I only really studied for, I only really studied hardcore for like two weeks, I gotta be honest with you. The weeks leading up to the two weeks, I did questions here and there. I was not avidly studying. I mean, we all have lives. I work over 40 hours a week. I am exhausted. I am a lab manager. It's just life, you know, just life. But I wanted to take what I did and I wanted to compare it to the test to see if it actually helped me out. Now I'm currently on vacation. I didn't bring any of my stuff with me uh, because vacation. Actually, literally the day I took the exam, I was on my way to the airport right after it. So without further ado, I'm gonna break it down as much as I can for you guys. And I'm gonna just tell you my tips and tricks that help me to pass. This will not work for everyone, but if it does help someone, that's awesome. So let's go. Okay, couple things. My program for nursing is not everyone else's program for nursing. I've come across some people in nursing school who's covered more topics than I have and vice versa. Second, what I've done to study for my NCLEX may not work for anyone else. I did not know this was gonna work. I passed. I just did it for me. This might not be the right method for you guys. I'm just showing you how I did it. First of all, you have to be ready. I wanted to make sure I took a break. I graduated in December. I wanted to take a proper break. I just wanted to work, decompress. I took a couple weeks off. Then I decided to pick what method I was going to use or what platform I was going to use. I researched on the blogs and chose UWorld. UWorld, I absolutely loved. I thought it prepared me. It gave me a lot of select all that applies. It gave me a lot of, well, it gave me practice assessments and over 2,000 questions and with every question it gives you rationales as why every answer is either right or wrong and a lot of select all that applies you're going to need it or when I booked my exam I gave myself a couple weeks I didn't if you guys feel ready to take it take it it's up to you but I wanted to give myself a couple weeks so my mind could wrap around that date so that's what I did. I am not perfect. I work full time and we all have other responsibilities. Was I diligent every day? No, I wanna say for at least two weeks, maybe three, I wanna say two, I hit every day with questions. I tried to at least do like a hundred questions a day, maybe not even over that. My brain just kind of fell off with it. The day of my test, I took it on a Friday and got my results on a Sunday. Now, Pearson allows you after 48 hours, you can pay $7.95 to get your quick results. I did that and you get your results right then and there. How did I feel after my exam? I felt like I failed it. I understand why people think they failed it because it was so broad. It was specific than the answers were broad. Going into it, I was very calm. It was just the day of the exam. There's nothing much you can do. Um, of course, I was internally panicking, but I don't know, the questions? I've heard these myths 
and I, I got a lot of select all that apply. My questions shut off at 75 questions and I screamed. I thought I failed. I, not almost in tears, but I just thought the worst. Um, a lot of people that I told after when I took it, what does it mean to shut off at 75 questions? It either means you did really, really good or really, really bad. My other friends have asked me how many select all that applies that I got. I literally had over half, kid you not. A lot of my friends just said, oh, if you have a lot of select all that applies, that means you're doing really, really well. I Googled that and apparently that's a myth, but I don't know. And then after the NCLEX, when it shuts off, you do a survey and you do practice questions for the newly formatted NCLEX that's going to come. After taking my exam, what did I think? You need to know how to prioritize patients and you need to know nursing in interventions for everything, pretty much. That's what we do. We're nurses. What interventions are we going to do? Every question that I took, I read it three times. I kid you not. Three times. Pull out the priority word. After when I read the question three times, in my head, I'm like, what is this question asking me in a different way? Then I read every answer, I think, two times, three times. And I thought about it in my head. I just thought about it carefully. Does this app, like apply? Does this help my patient? Is this beneficial? Is this the most immediate action that I can take? I also prioritized if there needs to be immediate intervention or if there's anything that I can do as a nurse and not just jump ahead to call the doctor. Obviously in those questions, if you hear a patient has strider, their throat is closing, they need oxygen, yes, you're gonna call rapid response team and more immediate action. In terms of they're short of breath, uh, they, you know, they're just trying to cough up secretions or something like that, elevating the bed might be a great first priority instead of just calling, you know, the doctor. I just logically thought in my head with those priority words, what would be a good choice. Then I prioritize life over limb, acute versus chronic. Those new words or new onset or new exacerbation, that's an issue when you go and pick a prioritizing question what answer that should be. I think those really, really helped me. And online, I googled how to prioritize nursing questions. The basic ABCs, Maslow's, life over limb, acute versus chronic, those were fantastic. It got me in that mindset. But doing practice questions with prioritizing is huge. Huge! I want to say you never know what you're going to expect going in there. I think you can study for the NCLEX, but I, I wouldn't go in and just like, you know, open the textbook, start from square one over four years. What I did was I focused on UWorld. I took topics. I took my notebook and I wrote down topics where I wanted to make sure I knew the patho a little bit better. If I had a pretty good understanding about it, I didn't stress myself over it. I really asked, do I know the patho behind this? Do I know nursing interventions behind this? And do I know proper teaching? Basic meds, what meds would be appropriate for it? With my medications and with my pharmacology, do I wanna say, did I study the action a lot? No, I made sure I knew what the basic class of meds targeted, what are the some of the big adverse effects, like we know with ACEs, a cough those big adverse effects. They all can cause nausea and they all can cause vomiting. But the big hard hitters that makes you want to discontinue that med. And then the important teaching, like the giveaway teaching. Oh, don't drink grapefruit juice. Those big interventions. The big standouts, like holy crap, that's really important to know. Contraindications, a few of those, what ones you don't mix with each other, that I really, really focused on. And then what I also did with pharmacology was I made sure what are like the key things you do not want to give certain patients with chronic illnesses? Like, oh, what's a good example? Uh, for end stage liver, no, for end stage kidney disease, I don't want to give magnesium. That is, holy crap, no. I just made sure I refreshed my mind. And almost in my notebook, I had just like simple bullet points. If I'm going in and writing paragraphs, that's not gonna help me. I just had a separate list. If I knew I had to understand a lot of information, I need like a good review on that. You know, before your exam, make sure you sleep, make sure you eat, make sure you breathe. 
during your time when you study, just make sure you have some time for yourself. Don't let it consume you too much. So anyway, so sorry for that informal quick video. I just wanted to update you. If anyone wants a more detailed video, I will do that when I have a little bit more time, kind of the beginning, the middle, during the test and the end. I'm happy to do that. I just wanted to get my initial thoughts out there. It just goes to show if you put your mind to it, you can pass. But like I said, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna keep celebrating and yeah. I'll update you guys later. Let me know what you want to hear maybe in the comments. Bye guys.